And that should be front and center for everyone. All right, then. Well, welcome everyone to the weekly Kubert community meeting. Let's see, where is my chat? It disappeared. I've pasted the link in chat. Hold oh, it. You're awesome. All right. Everyone can be sure and pull up the community uh, meeting notes and add themselves to attenders. That is big help for following along with the progress of the community and seeing your support. While everyone is adding themselves to the attendees, if there is anyone new who would like to introduce themselves and say hello, we would love to hear where you're coming from and uh, welcome you. All right, then. Um, hey, Andrew, is the schedule check-in thing a new part of the template, or is that? It is. It is. OK, cool. Um, so this was something that, uh, yeah, it must have been one of the weeks that you weren't here. Um, Ryan had a temporary schedule. Um, it's just that it would be a good idea now that we have this, and this only got merged last week, um, just week by week, um, there's not a lot to look at this week, except that cool. next week on Tuesday, we've got the Kubernetes release, which is a big deal. That is um, a big deal. But doesn't necessarily you know, af affect us in the immediate, um, mm -hmm. because the alpha's next week, uh, the following week, sorry. Cool. All right. You never know what you're going to miss if you blink, huh? All right, then. Uh, looks like project meeting at KubeCon April 8th coming up. Oh, God. Yeah, that is just here. April 18th. Sweet. 18th. And then I'm guessing that is UTC time? That is local time, so that will be Central European time. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, thanks for that. So that, yeah, that's for anyone who will be at KubeCon or at least mm -hmm. a day early um, in Amsterdam for that week, the 17th to the 21st, 22nd. Um, Kubert has a project meeting. Um, it'll be a, our first chance to get together face-to-face -to -face in, what, three years, something like that. Um, so it should be very exciting. Um, yeah, we're, we're very much looking forward to it. It's, it'll be two hours, 10.30 till 12.30. And then, um, uh, yeah, the information is in there for anyone who's able to be there. Um, our, our theme that we're going for is um, community roadmap and uh, use cases. Um, and yeah, how we can um, Im improve and just talk about those kinds of things. Um, and yeah, I've got a little bit of uh, extra swag um, extra special swag, swag, I should say, prepared for everyone who will attend that. So just in case you need a little sweetener to the deal, to seeing our faces, uh, there it is. Um, yes, and if you are able to attend, please let me know um, so I can cater accordingly. I'll be sending out an email probably next week because this is a very short week, um, putting together a, a bit of an agenda in, in an easier way just to say, hey, look, I'll be there. Um, yes, yeah, so that's well, it. Uh, I got a, I guess the couple of the next things, so I might as well jump straight onto them. Yep. Um, yeah, and if anyone does have a question about the project meeting, um, fire away. These next two kind of speak for themselves. Um, thank you to everyone who attended the Qbert Summit um, and who presented at the Qbert Summit. Um, it was uh, my first time organizing a conference, and um, everyone should know that we had a, a horrible uh, catastrophe on the first day, but. It was able to be quickly rectified. Um, and especially thank you to the people, um, Fabian and Lubo and anyone else who passed the word saying, hey, look, um, the old leg doesn't work. Here's where we're moving everyone. We're able to shift the event. Um, and uh, with 
minor, relatively minor disruption. Um, I'm very thankful for that. So high, high intense moment. Um, and those recordings, I'm hoping to get them done this week, um, but still working on them. They will be posted to the YouTube channel and I'll hit Slack and the email list when they do go up. So you know where to check them out. Um, yep, yeah, and anyone who did attend, um, you should have gotten a attendance survey. Um, I forgot to put this in the minutes, I just thought of it now. Um, please, please fill in. It's um, our only major way of um, understanding how these things go and to get feedback to be able to build on and improve um, in following years. So please fill them out. We do have a couple of extra t-shirts left, um, uh, quite special t-shirts that from our CNCF incubation um, and we'll have a random draw to um, a couple of the uh, people who fill in the survey. Um, so yes, thank you. Well, all right. That was a fun event team. All right then, um, jumping into open floor, it looks like Daniel Hiller brought up some working on visualizing the quarantine to test stuff. You want to speak to that? Yeah, just a quick update that um, I was, like I presented last week already um, at the Cupid Summit and um, I was already saying that uh, we are, are having quite like a blind eye on what tests are actually quarantined or, or not. And the thing is, so I worked on automation um, that should visualize that so that we have some HTML page that we can browse against and, and look at uh, what tests are quarantined somehow. Um, and my first interesting finding about that was that this test that I linked um, has been quarantined for more than one year now. And so um, I just wanted to, uh, this, this actually points out how important this should be to, to have something like that. Um, so that all my mumbling aside, this is just a smaller part of a broader initiative. So I thought this would be helpful as a first prototype of what you can do with looking at labels and you leveraging the outline of Ginkgo. Um, but actually this all should be some part of the uh, a bigger um, initiative in um, migrating from v V1 style Ginkgo labels to V2. So like what we don't want to use anymore and further iterations should be something like um, attaching labels like for example quarantine into the test name itself because of course we would want to have something dedicated like the v2 class labels um so yeah all this is uh, um barely covered i must admit into the issue i have linked there uh in the open floor um, and if anyone is interested in looking at that probably chiming in there please um please do this and and um yeah give your thoughts on that so um, we can think about what will be the most or the best path forward. Yeah, thanks. That's it for me. Thank you. All right, PRs look good according to Andrew Burden. Thank you for doing the review. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the group. Uh, any features, feature fields are related to freezing uh, VMs? Possible no mode set. Mm. CentOS servers, kubevert. Migrated image, grub, only ooh, same image to cube uh, to KVM and boot works fine.
Okay, that's definitely normal driver work, which I haven't done in a couple of years, but it's not too hard to come up with. Um, wonder if I can get to that later. If anyone's able to jump in and recommend the steps for, it's probably an, in, I don't know. Could be. Adding a linter. So linting and P2V video driver stuff in the mailing list. Does anyone have feedback on the linter thing? I see no reason to not add it. Cool. Uh, so this is on NPR with Victor Ufan. Um... And the main reason there was because um, certain login option, you wanted to avoid certain login option and regex are not um, supported by Nolint. But with uh, for Bitco, that would be possible. So, yeah. If none, nobody's against, you could just merge this. Uh, Kat, if you scroll a little bit up. Oh, OK. Um, there should be some examples. Um, just a little bit. Just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, there should be some regex, for example. Yeah, that one. So yeah, with uh, Nolingo, you can have like a text in this way. Okay, I'm not sure I... I'm prepared to respond here. Is anyone else going to be able to respond on that one? I personally like the option, but um, but I mean we want other opinions. That's why. Yep. Those things, uh, All right. Well, that is out there. If anyone is able to pick it up and contribute to the conversation. Jumping into bugs. Non-working linters. This week is the week of the linter. Well, is there anyone that wants CC'd on that?
I'm not sure what we can do about it. Okay. I'd say probably that we might ping the people that introduced us somehow. I'm not exactly sure who did that, but I think Golang CI is besides the regular linting stuff that is going on when you're building the project. So that's a separate task where, where you have additional linters from Golang CI. And I think that people were promising somehow to maintain those, but yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know the state of, of those linters. Got it. So linting is a big, bigger conversation all around. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, cool. Okay, well, our um, file system brains could have a fun one. Yeah, if you're into file systems. So we, we look up the mount info, and I suspect ZFS is, is doing something that we're not expecting, and that's why generating this error. I just don't have a ZFS file system to actually test this against. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, Alex. I, I, I think we actually see it also in our testing infrastructure. And not the, not, not the upstream one. So maybe it is, this is not really related to ZFS. Well, if you can get me access to a, a cluster that's you know, so on this we can fiddle around with it a little bit. I can't, but I can ping the people oh, okay. that will that will give you the access. Yeah, I, I can't really reproduce it because I I don't have a, a cluster that does it. So and, and I honestly think it's it just the you know we're we're uh looking up the mount info and parsing it to find the the right pass, et cetera. And I suspect there's just something in there that the parser don't like. That's my guess at this point. I suspect uh, even if we 
manage to get the container disk working. If you tried to hot plug a disk, you'd have the same issue. So. That's an exciting one. All righty then. Reviewing the agenda doesn't look like we have any last minute additions. Any um, shout outs or fun facts before we break? Going once, going twice. All right then, thank you all. And we will see you same time, same place next week. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Bye. See you.